so if you've been following my Twitch recently, you know I've recently finished my playthrough of Guardians of the Galaxy, and um, you saw my reaction to all the different events unfold. Um, and from now on, I've decided that I'll be reviewing every game that I play on my channel to give you guys my full thoughts in like a structured way um, so that you guys can see where I'm going through it. Um, so uh, without further ado, let's get into the review. So we're going to start with the story. Uh, <clears throat> this story in this case is a very classic comic book story, or actually more of several different uh, comic books drawn together. Uh, it's very engaging, the dialogue is entertaining, and the writing for the most part is really well done. I found myself constantly laughing at different jokes that were being thrown in my face, uh, especially by Rocket and Groot, and there are a lot of them, because these guys do not stop talking, which I really thought helped fill out the characters and make them feel like a group, which I really liked. Um, and the story did a good enough job, and the dialogue as well, to keep me engaged throughout the 16 or so hours it took me to play. Um, and as you follow the game through, it's 16 chapters, so it's about an hour a chapter, and I think that's quite long enough for the sort of game that it is. Um, they flow together nicely, and you can tell there is a fluid story throughout that's weaving through, even though sometimes you have little B stories that you're going on, be it like dealing with Lady Hellbender or... Um, other different characters like Fing Fang Foom and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, so I thought that's a really cool, um, really cool success. Um, however, I did think sometimes these B stories do add up to Princess in the Castle Syndrome. So if you don't know what that is, it's where you have the goal. And then when you finally reach your goal, because you think that's the end of the goal, the goal is suddenly somewhere else and you have to go do something else to get it. And I did feel like in the middle sort of chapters, that's where the game was going. And I always think it's a bit of failure on writing if that's how it feels like, but it wasn't overly noticeable for me to stop enjoying the game. Um, I want, I did want it to hurry up and get to the point, uh, probably about the 10, 11 chapter mark, but the later few chapters are really engaging. So it sort of pulls it back. Uh, furthermore, it can sometimes feel a bit like they're just trying to complete fan service um, by including as many characters from the Marvel Cinematic Universe. There's literally a scene where you're going through different realities and you hear um, different, char different characters from different realities, I guess. So you hear the MCU Aven uh, Avengers, you hear the Guardians, you hear Thanos, um, which I mean was really cool to see, but it did feel a bit fan servicey. Um, but I didn't mind it overly because I thought it was done pretty well. Uh, as were the characters that were added. Um, so Adam Warlock, Fing Fang Foom, uh, Mantis. Uh, but I'll talk about that later. And it does, as a story, feature some emotional twists that I thought actually landed. Um, and, and also a few other story revelations and twists that kept me on my toes and kept me engaged throughout the story, which I think is really good to be able to say about a story. Uh, and when I play games, I do look for that. Uh, I would have loved, however, to see a more adult version of the Guardians um, with maybe a bit more X-rated humour. They do swap some swear words around, so they say fly instead of fuck, um, which I thought was very clever, um, but I would have liked to see a bit more of that uh, maybe on the nose because I think the Guardians, like Deadpool, are sort of perfect for that, uh, but that's more just my own personal preference, uh, my sort of humour, and if they didn't do that, that's fair enough. So overall, I thought the story was pretty strong, um, as comic book stories go, it was a pretty good one, because sometimes they can feel a little bland and the samey. Um, I'm thinking of Marvel Avengers, uh, whereas this one, all the characters felt really developed, and I just thought it was a pretty fun and engaging adventure to follow. So, well done, Square Enix, on that. Uh, so, now we've talked about the overall story, we're going to look at individual characters, which are, in my opinion, the most important part of especially a game like this. Um, and in this game, it's obviously the Guardians themselves. And I thoroughly enjoyed my time with all of them. Um, almost all of them have interesting mini stories and things to get through. Rockets, I thought, was the most interesting, but Drax is also really good, and so is Peter's. Um, and I was really invested in their stories throughout. Um, I wanted to see where it was going. I wanted to spend more time with them. I would have appreciated, I know that you can only play as Peter Quill in this game, and they did that for a reason, but I would have preferred if you could just play as Drax or Rocket and go on these little side adventures and see these characters fleshed out even more on their own, because it's only really Peter you see on his own one-to-one, uh, -one. and I feel like that would have really helped to boost the character development. 
Um, however, Gamora and Groot do get the short end of the stick here, whilst still being still very likable. Uh, I don't think they're anywhere near as strong as Rocket and Drax's stories were, Gamora especially, because Groot, I feel like, is harder to write. Uh, he just s slowly gets more powerful, and he's always the same throughout, which is makes sense because all he says is, I am Groot, and his character is just being this lovable tree that gets along with everybody. Whereas Gamora, I feel like, should have had character progression, just like Drax. Um, so I would have liked to see... Uh, there's some revelations that come very late in the game, but they feel very added on and a little bit underdeveloped. So exploring that a little bit more would have been a lot more interesting and kept me engaged, I think. So whilst I don't think she's bad in any stretch, she could have been done a little bit better. Uh, but that's just... Per I, it's not really personal preference, I was going to say, because I think I've heard a lot of people say that about Gamora. But um, yeah, she's still a good character, and I still liked her. Uh, they're also constantly chatting through combat, which I think is great, as a team should. They're like talking about different things and working together to solve problems, and I really like that. Um, although you can barely go two minutes without it, so whilst it makes long sections feel less long because you have different dialogue keeping you engaged, it does feel a bit repetitive and samey after a while, and I would have liked to just have a little bit of silence now and then. Uh, but then I probably would have said it's too quiet for a team. So I guess it makes sense. Um, however, if you're going to do this, you need to make sure you have enough dialogue lines. Because hearing repeat dialogues really started to get on my nerves, especially towards the end. Um, and it really did start to bother me a little bit because I was hearing the same dialogue. Especially in combat, in the final sort of missions, they were cool. The same Nova cause, the same name, and over and over, especially Rocket. Uh, which was a shame. So I would have liked to have made sure there's more variety in voice lines because that would have then kept the experience fresh and I wouldn't have that criticism. So uh, next time, just if you're going to keep it constantly moving with dialogue and chat, which I personally really appreciate, then also make sure that you um, uh, have enough dialogue for that. Uh, as you would in team, there is conflict between them. However, I don't think it's delivered particularly well here. Um... I think especially between Peter and Rocket where in the starting few sections it can seem like you can develop your relationship with the Guardians and so you can stop Drax from throwing Rocket over a bridge. And if you do that it says Rocket was grateful uh, that you didn't throw him over a bridge uh, in the top right. But it doesn't really change anything. Rocket still gets pissed at you no matter what. He's no more lenient towards you and I would know because I must have got the lean most lenient ending because I always backed Rocket. Um, so that was a bit upsetting that, uh, well, you could do, you could literally be his slave for a week and he would still get pissed at you is what it felt like. Um, and I think it is an important part of the game to see the guardians become a family and not just a ragtag group of outlaws. It, there needs to be a good reason for it. Um, and despite you siding with the different guardians throughout their story, it just doesn't change anything. And they'll still have the conflict, which is I think is a real shame because they could have done something a lot more interesting and engaging. It's like Groot will side with Rocket no matter what, which I guess makes sense until you're like, but he loves everyone. Like, why Why is he so, why is he just not talking to Rocket? Because obviously those two can communicate and try to convince him or um, just standing his ground a little bit. So I think that was a little bit of a shame, but nothing too major to criticize. However, um, if we're talking about choices, as I mentioned earlier, you are it is the illusion of choice. Uh, there are very few choices in this game that affect the story, and even less that affect the end. Barely any, if any, affect the ending, uh, which is I think is a shame because they went through the effort to include choices and make let you role play as Peter Quill, but they. Um, ended up not really doing anything with it and the choices you make don't really matter bar some choices with the world mind cosmo and that's it which i think is a bit of a shame um because it just feels like a bit of wasted potential in my opinion to have different endings or different reactions which characters do but to have i don't know like if you don't have enough people supporting like in mass effect 3 if you don't have everyone supporting you 
then unfortunately you're just going to be um then you're probably going to lose some of your guardians like if a guardian died that would have been really powerful but i know that would have affected the ability to make a sequel and guardians don't really die and stuff like that but even side characters and stuff you'd lose a side character or something and that would have just been added um emotion to the story but for now what choices you make don't really affect what's going on and i think that really harms the replayability in a game that could have had loads um because if you had meaningful choices there's a lot of reason to go back and play the game again um but hopefully if they do a sequel that they'll work on building these choices to actually mean something and i look forward to seeing what they they are but they've got a foundation for choices it's now just making it actually factor into the overall story and characters uh the side characters are also really well done with my personal favorites being uh cami and cosmo as they are so cute lovable and funny um and i think the dog characters are just the best um but i also really love their take on several other key characters in the marvel universe uh for example mantis i think is so much better done in this in the game than it is in the mcu uh, so it was really great to see her shine and me actually like her. She also seemed really powerful and can like tell different futures and see what's going on. And I thought that was a really great thing for her character to have. Um, so yeah, it was great to see her like that. Uh, Nikki's storyline was also one of the most compelling in the game. And I was she was who I wished they focused on a little bit more. I know she was like the leader of the church, but to see her actually having different scenes, like the scene with her and Peter in like their promise i think it's called um was really good and i really liked that scene so seeing more of that would have been a really great addition i think so more of the side characters would have been great i would have also liked if they maybe swapped out so say like adam warlock um swapped out for drax in certain situations or something like that and you can write that quite easily so that would have been cool just to spice up combat a little bit uh but as in this game, you just have the five guardians to uh, control, and that I think is a bit wasted as well. But each to their own um, on that one. That's just personal preference. Uh, but overall, I thought the characters were strong, and I actually preferred this team uh, in the game to that of the movies. I just wish that I could feel the weight of my choices, and the team was equal in their development. Uh, that would have been really great to see. But I would happily see these these rough rough tag gang of um adventurers uh in the sequel uh if they decide to make it but i know it had it didn't do particularly well in the in sales and stuff so whether it will get one i am not sure but it was widely quite positively received so it just depends i guess what they care more about now we're going to go on to the villains um and for me they are the biggest issue in the game and where it starts to lose points a little bit uh, I just don't think that the church had enough development to be considered the main villains. Uh, I would have loved to perhaps seen a darker version of Lady Hellbender or the Nova Corps as a focus, because actually Lady Hellbender was an interesting villain and had a motive to go after the Guardians after they screwed her over. And whilst it makes for a little bit of a more simplistic story, especially for the first game, you could have focused on the Guardians getting to know each other, escaping sheer numbers and probably had a little bit of a more interesting story than the promise uh, which i think is a little bit cliche um i think seeing her more frequently would have been a great improvement for the game because she's only really in the starting few chapters and then the later few chapters in the middle you don't really think of her or i completely forgot about her uh whereas raker who's the main villain in this or the promise thing is uh was just really bland in my opinion i didn't overly hate him as you should hate a villain i just didn't care uh, i think if they do a sequel i would there's so many sinister and intriguing villains to pick from uh even adam warlock uh he um has a bit of a villain streak in him and that's a lot more interesting than breaker is i thought he was just very generic and very bland for a villain in the marvel universe because there are several who are really cool and they could have done something really interesting here so the villains are weak in this game and you don't stick around because you're interested to see or you really want to see the heroes win against the villains that's just not how this works uh, unfortunately uh so next on to the most important part so that's as if it was a movie that would be my thoughts but we're going to go into the more important part the gameplay 
Now, this was something I was very pessimistic out about before. Because um, when I learned you were only going to play a Star Lord, I thought it was going to be very wasted potential. And for me, I think it was. Um, I would have loved to have seen played as the other Guardians, as I said earlier, uh, for their own individual sections. I just think it would have been really cool to charge around as Drax. We, uh, even a team up session between Groot and Rocket, where, where you swap between the two characters or have a two-player section, this game would lend itself perfectly to that, in my opinion. Um, and I think it would have made the upgrade system a lot more impactful as well, because there is upgrades in this game. You can upgrade each Guardian three times, um, but they're not very different. It just unlocks a new ability. Uh, and I think that's a shame, because it just doesn't feel very useful, because you obviously level up Star-Lord first, and then everyone else's abilities, they dip in and out of uh, different sections and you can't, don't have access to the full roster of Guardians all the time. So it just, it made sense to pick the Guardians that you'd see the most of. So Rocket, Gamora, uh, whereas Drax and Groot can sometimes, uh, Groot disappear? Yeah, Groot disappears sometimes now and then. So it would have been nice to, um, I don't know, have been able to play as the other Guardians. So that would be my big criticism there. But having said that, I do think that we received the best that we could have got here. Uh, the abilities are dynamic and add a lot to the battlefield, uh, and they do affect it dramatically. Groot and Rockets work well in sync, which makes sense, because obviously they're a team in the team. So while mm -hmm. that made it uh, almost my go-to tactic was to hold everything down as Groot and then fire grenades as Rocket, because they're both AoE attacks and they both do magnificent damage, and it was really satisfying to do. And I really enjoyed, actually, after setting up a strategy and seeing my Guardians go through and do it, I was like, damn, that was cool. I did that as Commander. And I always felt like Quill in a little bit. I was like, damn, that was me. Um, so that was good. Using different stun attacks and damage attacks to slaughter your enemies is really fun. Uh, and learning what each ability succeeds at and, has, and is useful for was something that I enjoyed doing. Uh, and it also push me to think about the best abilities to sync together like i said with the rocket and group one gamora and drax had some good ones where if you max them together you could decimate almost any enemy and quill also had some fun attacks that were dynamic and allowed you to move around the battlefield uh, a lot easier which i think was a good choice and i think all of the attacks are relevant to the people they're with especially their mega abilities which they get towards the end once you start wrapping up their mini stories um and i feel like this is where, going back to the characters, I didn't think Groot and Gamora earned their mega ability. It just felt very rushed and added on because they needed a mega ability. Whereas Star-Lord, um, Rocket, and Drax, I thought, really did earn their mega abilities and to have it makes sense. Uh, I also really liked uh, the different elemental choices you could make with uh, Quill's guns to like work around the map um and pull different things or like destroy different obstacles to get around things and i thought that was a really clever way of doing it um so that i liked and i also think the game wasn't too hard and it wasn't too easy um but it was hard enough that i died now and then and on the bosses i had to take some time to learn what their mechanics were um it, but most things most sections you could get through quite easily and the different difficulty sliders I played on normal, but they would allow you to customize your playthrough depending on how you feel. So if you absolutely love um, really difficult combat, then you go for the hardest difficulty. And if you want it a bit easier just to experience the story, you can go on easy. So I always appreciate that in games. Um, and speaking of, boss battles are, were really engaging. Uh, with them focusing on making the villains themselves tough to beat with clever mechanics. Um, so there was these two big red brothers who, if they got close enough together on the battlefield, they couldn't be hurt. So you had to separate them, be it by distracting one and causing setting the other two on the others, because so, you had Drax and Gamora with you, or um, if you um, just managed to keep them at arm's length by luck. Then, And I thought that was a really unique mechanic and made fighting bosses really interesting. There, I just don't think there was enough of them. Um, key bosses, I think there was four or five, and I think it would have been cool to see um, maybe a few more, like every chapter or something. Uh, the Thing Fang Foon boss fight, though, is the highlight of the game. Really loved it. Um, and if you are looking to have a cool dragon fight, then you have one there, and you have to use different teammates' abilities to get through it. And I, I like that. Um, and it didn't do my pet peeve of just because they can't think of an interesting mechanic for the boss, they pile it high with different um, guards and uh, different goons and stuff you do have to kill as well. 
So I appreciated that because I always hate when they do that. So I think the strength that the gameplay had surprised me and really held up the game and improved it tenfold. So well played, Square Enix. In this, I was wrong to doubt you. You exceeded my expectations and I was more with ha than happy with the game that we got. Gameplay that we got. Uh, so graphics and score. Uh, the graphics were great throughout. And there were times when I'd stop and look at the scenery and all, go into photo mode and be like, damn, this looks really cool. There'd be flying whales going over the sky and different nature stuff. And that was really cool. Uh, the creativity uh, that went into designing the creatures, ships and enemies that inhabit the galaxy were really innovative. And I felt like I was in Star Wars, uh, which is always cool um, and interesting to look at. I would have uh, I would constantly be like, damn, that's really cool. Unique sort of alien. And that's what this game definitely needed to be. There's also space battles, uh, which look really good and feel really good. Um, the controls are a little bit interesting, uh, and I struggled a little bit. But it was, yeah, I had no complaints. Being able to fly a ship and shoot other ships down is one of my favorite things to do in video games. So the fact that I got to do it here is a big win. Um, I also really enjoyed the Guardians design, and many of their different costumes were really cool. And I really liked that they included that. When you found them, you could put them on straight away. And there were some really cool ones um, for Groot, especially, and Rocket. They Those two had some really unique and awesome skins. Uh, I did struggle to find a good one for Gamora, but I think that's just my lack of exploration and lack of luck. Um, so you probably had some better luck uh, finding a good skin for Gamora. Uh, but for the most part, the ones that I've seen and I've gone through and looked at all the different ones, they're really unique. So the developers should pat themselves on the back for that because uh, sometimes they can all be quite generic. And there are a few obviously generic ones, but for the most part, they're all pretty unique and cool. Uh, and the score for the most part was also excellent. The music was often very fitting to the gameplay. And I really appreciated that they included a streamer mode. Many games don't. Um, and the fact that they do that really shows that they care. Um, however, similar to Life is Strange True Colors, it m did mean that I missed out on having music in some places. So whilst I appreciate the inclusion of the mode, having some streamer-friendly music playing in the background of certain scenes, especially after you do huddles. So huddles are where you press the button and all the teams gather together and you deliver an inspirational speech. And then you go out with, you're on your strongest form, you're all healed up, and you can just basically restart the battle again. But uh, the progress you are which i think is useful and i try and tried to avoid doing it especially in cool moments because the second i press that button uh, he'd play his mp4 and from what i think from that um mp4 i don't know his music device <laughs> um and when he um pressed that some obviously copyrighted music coming through and that was a shame because it make really cool fights just me running around in silence which isn't as fun. Whereas uh, when it was on, it was uh, really engaging music and I really liked it. I was pounding my head. I was going, this is cool. This is sick. So I definitely was here for that. Uh, so uh, that's the score and graphics overall. Really good. Well done, Square Enix. Uh, bugs and glitches. Uh, overall, my experience with this game was really smooth and ran into only a few bugs um, towards the end of the game. Uh, quick resume on the Xbox Series X broke my game in some places and it was seriously lagging, like stuttering really bad and different things. It was like playing a really bad game of Apex um, and it did take away from my overall enjoyment, but that isn't an issue with the game. It's an issue with quick resume, so it's not something I'm holding against them. However, if you play on the Xbox Series X and have access to quick resume, then just bear in mind that it does break the game a little bit. So I recommend saving and quitting, and then you get the full bug-free experience back again. Uh, and there was an odd bug now and then with cutscene glitches um, also being present, but nothing truly game-breaking. I didn't really crash, um, which I thought was really good. It's, it was a very well-polished game. And I commend them for that. It's nice to see a developer release a game without too many bugs. I don't, I didn't play it day one, so I don't know how it was then. But from when I played it, it was well polished and shipped in a state that they should be proud of. So, well played. And I also wanted to say, as a side note, I wanted to talk about the actual world itself. Um, and it is a good world. Um, it's filled with very interesting and unique characters, and I really enjoyed exploring it. However... This sort of game would have been the perfect open world experience, flying around in your Milano, going to different places, because they already included space combat and space flying. Uh, you do it in several scenes. You have loads of different hub worlds with like nowhere, 
And I think if they just chose to expand it, much like playing as different Guardians, it could have been a really cool experience and also included side quests. And that would have been a great way to expand your game. So next time, I would love for them to diversify a little bit more and maybe go down that route. Um, that would be really cool. Just an open world um, superhero game like the Arkham. Marvel needs that. And I think, well, it's got Spider-Man, but like with a franchise like this, it would be perfect. So I would really hope that you guys, Square Enix, if you're listening, go down this road because this franchise is perfect for it and I will be fully on board. Uh, just take my money already. But yeah, they. I would have loved to see more of that. And also next time, I would really, really love to uh, be able to play as different Guardians. I know I've said that throughout the whole thing, but I'm going to reinforce it once more. I really want to play as Rocket. Okay, I want him to be my main character and to go through an entire mini story with just him. Um, and you know, if they do DLCs with different characters like Rocket or Groot, that will be really cool, and I'll definitely be on board for that. But yeah, that's just what I wanted to add. The world is really cool, filled with unique and interesting things, collectibles that you can either collect or not, but you always feel satisfied when you get them. Uh, and you also, when you're going around destroying the world, these little goo things that the game does a really clever competition with rocket to try and introduce you to so if you destroy them there's usually secrets hidden but behind them and when you um, find them you do feel a sense of gratification and you can also get some upgrades for star lord that you can't do with the other guardians so obviously you have perk points but you also can spend these little resources that you find around the world uh, on different workbenches uh, to upgrade um peter and his actually like health and stuff like that which i thought was cool um but I don't know, I didn't really use it too much. I didn't feel like I needed to. Maybe on the higher difficulties, you might find that resource a little bit more useful. But yeah, uh, overall, the upgrades were cool, but and the world was good, but more innovation could have led to an open world game, and I won that really badly. Thanks, Gary Nick. And so that brings me pretty much through everything that I enjoyed and dis didn't enjoy so much about the game. Um, and the game in total was a lot of fun to play, and I had a re some really great moments. I know people in my chat, Steve, uh, Doggy, if you don't know him, said that it was uh, his second favourite um, superhero game of all time, and I probably have to say it's up there as well. I don't think it's as good as the Arkham series, in my opinion, um, but it's definitely better than a few of the others I've played. <coughs> Avengers, <coughs> which is actually done by the same developer, so, you know, well, I think it is. Mm, don't hold me to that if that's wrong that might be a slip of the tongue comment but if it is well played you listen to feedback and you came back it's not live service it's a complete story game and if a dlc came out i'd be pretty happy about it and i really loved getting to know these raging group of misfits i do think the story and villain motivations could have been stronger but i'm remain engaged and the amazing gameplay breathtaking graphics and fun vibes helped to lift the game for me uh, and it was definitely an above average experience. Uh, however, it does lose some points for the illusion of choice, um, for the individual, for the lack of character development for Gamora and Groot. And it's more on the story side and the gameplay. And I think they could have, if they had time, uh, decided to let you play as other guardians. I think that would have been a really cool feature to have. So it's not perfect, but it is definitely above average. Therefore, I'm going to give this game a 7 out of 10. If you're looking for an entertaining story game and love superheroes, then this is a good choice. And if they decide to make a sequel, then I will be along for the ride. And willing, more than willing, to board the Milano once more with the gang. So, that was my very first review. It's a bit of a shorter one because there isn't as much to talk about in this game, I don't think. Uh, it's a lot of fun, um, and it's that's sort of the best way to describe it, I think. It's a fun-loving game, 7 out of 10. So you see, after the Fallout, you guys you guys know I like, I'm like. i quite easy going with my marks. But we've had two lower down um, sort of marks recently. So that's good. You guys can see. So we'll see what the Batman brings. But um, for superhero content, that'll be the next big superhero thing covered. But, I yeah, I love this game. Uh, I would be more than happy with the sequel or any DLC that they decide to include. I didn't go over any story beats here because I didn't want to spoil anything if you decide to pick it up. Uh, but yeah, I'd recommend if you're looking for something to play uh, that's a little bit of fun, this is the one for you. Uh, but yeah, I will be back 
uh, in, later in the week for more uh, for more fun and streams and reviews. And I hope you're having fun. And and of course, the Echoverse Limited show. Thank you very much for watching this entire review. I hope you enjoyed yourself and found it informative. Let me know if you have any feedback on it and want the style to change, and I will be happy to try and format that in the coming few reviews. Thank you very much. I will see you all next time. Stay noisy. Goodbye. Bye.